Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by Jamie Conlon. Jamie, just a wee, wee brief conversation on before I pushed record there about how you and the family, but I'm going to ask again, how are you keeping in the, obviously, with the global crisis, what's going on at the moment? How are you and the family? We're good. We're, we're, we're safe. We're well. Um, been safe, self-isolating now for, for two weeks, but it's, it's been... It's been testing, but as long as everyone is, is healthy and, you know, that's the main thing at this moment in time. But it's good to, to young girls, keeping them occupied and active and uh, keeping their days laid out, structured is, is pretty important. So it's, it's been good. Are you doing the homeschooling? Are you, the, are you doing the teaching? A wee bit of that? I am the, I'm the more stricter of the two. Tracy. <laughs> A bit more uh, lenient and says them. She does the PE in the morning on that Joe Wicks thing and stuff. Oh, yeah. So they're doing all that jumping around the different rooms. And but no, it's grand. Um, we, we go out. We do a walk every day. That the four of us. Sophia has a wee trike, so she fires off on that. But it's grand. It's a. Uh, it's it's testing, but it's grand. I know it's hard to talk boxing in a time like this when obviously the whole world is <laughs> suffering with this coronavirus and whatnot. But I'm going to talk a little bit of boxing. I'm going to talk straight, jump in with you. I mean, just before this global crisis hit, or just when it was starting, it was announced that you sort of had like a promotion within MTK. You're now the vice president. Now, are you, just tell me what that job entails. Is it, is it something that you've been doing for a long time? And have you got more work to do, so, so to speak? Have you got more to do in terms of managing fighters and whatnot? No, I still manage. Still manage the fighters on, uh, as well. Um, it's just added a bit more on to the, the workload, more uh, of a corporate side, more going and dealing with America. So everything to do with America, everything to do with top rank, everything to do that side will be myself and a few others. But there's, there's, it, it's, it's not hard work. It's, it's something you love. It's something mm -hmm. you kind of, for me, being a boxer, seeing the other side, this other side, it's opening my eyes to, to the game a whole different way. Um, Learning every day, I've got a good team behind me, good team with me, that I can always bounce off. And Bob Yelling being the president, it's just kind of taking a lot of his workload off him and helping out on that side, working with uh, the TV companies, the, the, the streaming services, all this now. So we're kind of growing and trying to expand further on our US endeavor. So it's, um, it's good. It, it's learning, constantly learning. It's good to be part of it. It's... It's uh, it's it's something that I've always wanted to kind of branch into, and I'm finally starting to branch into it more and more. And it's fantastic. It's um, it's a dream job, as they say. Yeah, definitely. Um, you're talking there. Is it? Have you been a little more? Is frustration frustrated the wrong word? I don't know. But are you a little bit frustrated that you've just got this job? You're just about to kick start, and then obviously everything just seems to have shut down now. Like you can't really go into your job head first and crack on with like what you said the tv networks are dealing with the american side of things and whatnot is a little bit frustrating that you <clears throat> excuse me for the fact that you're sort of stuck in the house there's nothing for you to do even though you've been you've got this new promotion this new fancy vice president of mtk but there's nothing for you to do really no well i've technically been doing the role since december um december late november december so i've been planning to do the team not kind of dealing with shows on a weekly, fortnightly basis kind of helps now that we have this you know, long period of time where we're down time where we can pre-plan, we can prepare, we can, uh, instead of putting plasters on small wounds, we can, we can cover up wounds that we previously had that we can fix wrongs, we can go forward now. It's given us a lot of structure, a lot of... A lot of time to pre-plan and, and structure the, the, the future for the company. Although you do miss the, the hectic daily schedule that mm. it, boxing usually throws at you, the curveballs that can't come along daily. But it's gives, it gives us a time to, to expand, you know, to, to, to get these kind of meetings with um, other global management companies, other global promoters, other global networks. Um, it's now the most frustrating part is the planning that we had been doing previous to this, the likes of Josh Taylor in Scotland, the likes of Carl Frampton in, in Belfast, 
Mick in St. Paddy's Day and, and we're hoping still August is still on the cards for Mick. But all this planning that we have done months in advance, kind of going by the wayside and stuff like that is has been annoying. And also our planning dates. So we're always planning for schedules, hoping that the government, you know, we get this crisis covered and done. If we get it done for a certain date, we'll go on that date and so on and so forth. It's that's the, the, the frustrating part about it. It's not known where we're you know, when we're going to be back. I think we're, we're, we're planning for worst case scenarios and we've got all different sets of plan A, plan B. The likes of Lee Eaton now, it will be he'll probably be going bald on it because he's just <laughs> day to day, hands on, wanting to do everything. Mm. Um, so it's him, someone like him, it would be crazy. It'll be this. Staying at home will be a nightmare. Where for me, it's a bit of a breath of fresh air. It's given us a time to reflect, um, a time to pick up the pieces of what we think that you're, you're, you know, you're skipping, you're missing out on. Um, yeah. And to get is the, to get the building blocks for the future go laid down. Is it a case of another cancel? The British Boxing Board of Control have cancelled shows for the month of May as well now. So anything is going to be in June, maybe. We don't know, like you said there, about the global crisis and what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen if the government are going to keep us on lockdown even further. But is it, are you going to cram all the shows in that were meant to do? Obviously, you're planning shows for August and September and whatnot, but the shows that were meant to be in like April and May, are you, are you going to cram them all in for the tail end of this year? Is it going to be a busy, busy final part of this year, final quarter, final third or whatever? Are you going to sort of cram all these shows in? Is it going to be a show every week, so to speak? No, we have a contract with ESPN Plus, you know, to, an annual contract with ESPN Plus to kind of fulfill our obligations. Um, we will sit down with them once we get a green light on our side to see where we can pick up from. We have uh, constantly be renewing our dates with, with various venues all around the country, including Belfast and Scotland and uh, London. We're just constantly ringing up renewing a different date because you know, the, the border, you know, we, we're not ready to go back then. The, the, the country isn't ready to go back to, to live sports and, and audiences and crowds. So we constantly then renew a different date with, with hope and pre-planning for that date. But you know, we, we're not going to cram everything on a weekly, week by week basis, but we, it could give us a better chance to put in bigger and better shows, you know, since we're not going to be doing one small show and, and running on the next show, we could be doing a bigger and better shows and, and moving forward. We have a different set of time scale that we want to do all these shows in, but for the rest of the year, I, you know, we're looking at one a month. One a month. Was that is a, a bit you've gone there, Jamie? I don't know if you're coming back. You there? No, you come back there, you are. I've got you, mate. You went there? Yeah, I went there for a second. I got you, you said you're going to do one a month. Uh, one big show a month, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's just that it'll be a converse, conversation still that we'll sit down with ESPN Plus, sit down with AFL, and, and just make sure everything's on the, the right path and we're on the right schedule together. You, you manage if you might you manage quite a lot of fighters as well, Jamie. Are you still in contact with them? I mean, they must be sort of pulling their hair out because fighters, you want to go to the gym, you want to punch the bag, you want to hit the mitts, you want to spar, you want to get into training camp. You've had a fight due. How are, are the fighters that you manage and maybe Mick, I suppose, as well? How are these your fighters and fighters in, in within MTK, how are they dealing with this sort of crisis as well? Everyone's dealing with it slightly different. Um, Mick and Carl have gyms in their own houses, so they're able to um, continue as, as before. They're, they're, they're working out as before, they're training on daily spaces. Um, they have no dates in mind, they're just, they're just keeping fit, keeping, keeping active. And, and then you have Sean McComb is constantly running, he, he's out running, but he's kind of taking a, take a, a more of a back seat because he was in the tailor end of his camp. He was mid sparring with, with Jack Catchell and, Terry Flanagan in Manchester when he when he had well, yeah. all that he had to go home. Um, so it was kind of unfortunate for him. He's just had to tail off, taper off a wee bit, and he's had allowed some downtime. Paddy McCrory, 
was working in a, in a gym. So it was a PT. He was constantly used to being training, but it's now, you know, he's just sitting at home with his, with his wife and his, his two kids. His wife works with the NHS, so he's kind of taking a complete back seat and trying to relax and, and just look after the family at the minute. And then you have other kids who are just coming through who are just doing the exact same, who are sitting playing PlayStation at the minute and being big kids and in, in, in this, getting to live their dream probably of sitting at home where your mum and dad would have kicked you out of bed and told you to get to work. Exactly. Well, I'm like that now. I'm, I'm master on this Xbox. My son's got an Xbox and he plays that Call of Duty. So yeah. I'm like kicking ass in that Call of Duty now, talking to people online. I've never done it before. So now, now I'm starting to kick ass and be a proper little gamer. But uh, yeah, it, it is kind of hard to stay motivated, I suppose, when you're stuck in the house. Do you know what I mean? It's especially, you can, like, I don't know what it's like in Northern Ireland, but we are allowed out. The Scottish government has said we're allowed out once. And that's it, do a little bit of exercise, but stay home, obviously. So are you managing yourself to get out and do a little bit of fitness and stuff like that? I uh, go run. Mick has lent me some uh, dumbbells and stuff for his gym. So uh, we parry the back in, in, the, in the backyard and just in the garden, just um, doing some, some training, then go run every other day. But just taking over. I, I'm eating more, i got to be honest with that. You know, hibernation, it seems like. Where, See, Mick's got the, the bacon down. Has he sent you over some banana or cheesecake and all that? Banana? Because I've been um, ripping in the pieces for making banana or banana bread. I don't banana understand bread. what the fascination is with banana bread. Um, he hasn't, but the other day I had a, a, a doorbell ring and opened the door and there was a bit of cake left at the door, on the doorstep from him. Um, well, good brother. Covered off, I, so he had left some cake for uh, the kids and stuff. He had made a Victoria sponge cake and he wanted to hear our opinion. So <laughs> we had to video our opinions of how his cake was. Did you see this coming, Mick? Uh, Jamie, did you see this coming from Mick that he was going to be a baker? Did you see any of this? No, no he, he wouldn't be the... He thinks he's a good chef, but uh, I didn't see it coming. He's, he's really taken to it and he's constantly getting in supplies to, to do more cooking and stuff like this. but. He wants to do some kind of, he loves the, the Bake Off that they're, what is it, is the British Bake Off or something? I don't know yeah, what it's called. Yeah. Um, he keeps telling me about that, bugging on about that. And, um, celebrity one. Ah, uh, he wants to do some celebrity kind of Bake Off or Cake Off, whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm just worried about his weight, you know. He'll have a, a hard knock on the door from, from my dad as soon as this is over with the, with the pads on, looking to get, Get him back in the shape because he'd probably run away as a middle. Now he's saying that he tells me he eats the cake and then gets on the running machine for about an hour. So he feels guilty. Ah, uh, he feels guilty about it. Right. Well, good on him. I, he's promised me. I told him I like cheesecake, and he's promised me that he's going to make me some white chocolate cheesecake next time I land in Belfast. So he's got a list. He's got a list. See, many people has got on to him and said I like this. So he's 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 making it and going out and getting all the ingredients and sitting down and, and trying to put it together. Fair play to him, man. And boxing's a short career, man, so he's going to open a bakery in <laughs> Belfast somewhere, so good on him. Uh, what about um, yourself, Jamie? You mentioned earlier in the interview there that um, you've been a fighter, you, you've been a manager, now you're sort of doing this sort of dealing with TV networks and stuff like that. The only thing you haven't done is be a trainer. You ever thought about training fighters or maybe d- dabbling into that? When I was boxing, I always thought I would be a trainer. I always thought I would probably... That would be the, the lay of the land from me after. That would be where I would end up, the pathway to be in the, the coaching or training. But uh, to be a trainer, you, like, to, to be a boxer, you have to dedicate your whole life to, to be a trainer, even more so. Because when one, one fighter finishes the, his session, another fighter starts. You know, your day constantly evolves around the routines of various different um, boxers. So it's... It's, it's very hands-on, it's very um, time-consuming, it's very, you know, it's unforgiving the job of a trainer a lot of times. I would be one of them ones who would be unforgiven towards trainers, but when you think from their perspective, they do, they do, get, a, they do get a lot of the short end of the stick. You know, the, the, for me, from the fighter's point of view, a trainer would have a, a, a conveyor belt of talent coming through and you losing wouldn't be the end of his world the way it would be the end of your world. So I, I always have that mindset towards it. But when, when I spend more time with trainers and my father being the coach of the Irish team, et cetera, et cetera, 
you started to see from there is also um, the perspective from their view and seeing that, you know, how much of your day gets, gets took up by a failure. A failure's day is one-on-one -on -one with the trainer for an hour and then you go back, you rest, recover. The trainer's day is constantly one-on-one um, -on -one with various different failures, building all these game plans, building on this thing and, and then, you know, you know, that's it kind of thing. It's, it's a lot more consuming whereas the fighters is one hour, you know. Yeah. So it's, the training, it's the training, uh, training, the yeah. training from an amateur standpoint, from, from my dad's standpoint, it's, it's, uh, it's very, uh, very fatiguing. You can see it. They're all over the world. The Irish team are all over the world, especially now at the Olympic cycle. They're constantly training camps, constantly putting um, periodization charts together, you know, timetables of when fighters should peak on a continuous basis it's very hard for for the coaching staff um in that regard it's 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 but i always i would argue with him the 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 importance and how tough it is on the fader in that position because i am speaking on his on their behalf for it so it would be something i always thought i would get into something i enjoyed i, I always helped with my dad trying to make uh, as an amateur so I always got to see that side of it. I always got to see what you put into it. And I enjoyed seeing a game plan being, you know, laid out over for six weeks, eight weeks, and then coming in, you know, poetry in motion on yeah. the night. Everything that you've all set down and worked together and then being coming out and being painted so well in the ring with, with Nick. Um, and, and you really got a serious buzz out of that because you were going like, we, we, you know, we put this in, we devised this plan, and he was able to go in and, and, and dissect it and, and show it off. So you're saying it's a never say never situation then? I I, I think I went the whole way around there and said it didn't, and then I would, but it's a never say never. It's something I would enjoy. I love the sport of boxing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'll, be really, your I'll be your number two, Jamie, don't worry. Oh, no, no, I, I, love it. I love the sport of boxing. I love kind of this side of it, what I'm now um creeping into it and 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 building up on I, i'm i'm really enjoying this side of it i'm enjoying the side of the, the various different personalities in this side understanding the the people in this side understanding the, the many different egos that you have to um deal with on this side as well as dealing on the management side i, I enjoy constantly working on behalf of the boxer it, for me you know People forget when you're dealing with this side. You understand that people actually do forget that boxing wouldn't be boxing without the boxers. And and they, I I like to keep remind the people that that they they forget that a lot. Definitely, Jimmy. You were out in New York when sort of this all happened as well. With Mick, it was just about to, he was just about to have his fight on St. Paddy's Day. Um, it was the show was going ahead. Then it was going ahead with no fans, just the fighters, and then it got cancelled. How was Mick's mindset and your mindset throughout that sort of few days you were out in New York when this was sort of developing? Two different mindsets completely. Um, and it was strange because it was only me and him over there at that time. Then Harlem, Eubank came over and Charlie Beat came over. Um, but it was only us and you couldn't really... I couldn't speak honestly to, to him at times because my, my mindset was different. I was kind of saying... I think we need to forget about boxing. We need to get home here. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I didn't want to derail what he was because, you know, he wanted the fight. We were set to have a conversation. Sorry, we, we were sitting to have a conversation. Um, I think we got there the first night. Nothing really was. So we were getting told everything was okay and everything was going ahead. We got there on a Tuesday night. Um, I'm near sure it was the same night. President, we had finished our dinner, we were coming home. That was the second night, actually, it was the Wednesday night. We finished our dinner, we were, we were just back in the apartment. I'd sat down in the apartment, and Mick had went down the house, just down the hall. And I'd seen all over the news, every station went on, it was Trump addressing the, the, the people that he was going to close on Monday or Friday um, flights to him from Europe. Mm -hmm. So I uh, immediately got on to uh, Brad Jacobs of Top Rank and Harrison of Top Rank. We had a conference call and we were going to play by ear. I, I, was, I was stressing the fact that I was getting also word from, from government back home with kind of official 
our facial guidelines, and then unofficial guidelines of what they kind of do. And so we were kind of playing it by ear on that night when Down spoke to Mick. So he remained so focused on fighting. I think the next morning we had another conference call, or we had another meeting um, with uh, Sal from Madison Square Garden. Justin, they were had told us that we're going to do it without people. Uh, my then thought was, what is the point in this kind of thing? I think when you just get home with the health and safety, this isn't good for us. We have kids to go home to, myself, Michael, and uh, kids to go home to. So I spoke with Brad Jacobs and we said, I'd, say, I'd relay that how I was feeling. Um, so he'd said, I'd come back to each other. We're going to have a meeting tomorrow morning about uh, what we're going to do, make a call one way or another, but Kenson was show on the Tuesday. So we had the show on the Saturday and then the show on the Tuesday. I think he rung me about 45 minutes later and just said, Jamie, that it's been scrapped, that the, the commission are, are, are not going to hang. I'm giving you a heads up because no one else knows you. So we got a heads up and sat down. I was eating fucking buffalo wings or something like this in front of Mick, who was eating nothing. And as soon as I told him, he just grabbed my plate off me and just spilled <laughs> Build the buffalo wings and um, we we got out of there 24 hours later. But it was it, that, that was my thought throughout the week when we had seen the, the 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 extent of what this was coming into and getting the the word back, etc. I was starting to kind of feel you know the, the safe safety for 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 myself, my brother, his kids, and my kids that you know this isn't the place we need to be in. It was a very overly populated city. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone was carrying on like normal. There was no real, there was no no uh, mass fear, no hysteria, no no real um, cause, no, no nothing really getting took in the effect. Everything was acting like normal. Bars mm -hmm. were open like normal. Everything was was continuing on like normal. And you were getting word from back home that you know, there was a crisis on hand and there was a pandemic um, sweeping the nation. So it was kind of you know, you were caught in a conflict, whereas. Obviously, I wanted to see him defeat. Obviously, I wanted to see him win again and, and improve and move on his career. Obviously, I wanted to see him get paid because it was a hefty paycheck that he was getting. Um, but health is your wealth in the end of the day. And yeah, I had to have keep that in mind. Whereas I didn't want to lay out on to him in case we still had, still he, he had the end call. We had to sit down. I told him that morning we were going to sit down as a team when Charlie came over as, as one of the coaches. And, and get Adam on the phone and everyone sit down as a team and make a decision, is this the right call? But it was taken out of our hands, thankfully, and we got out of there and clean. We're not, no virus is with us, thankfully. That's, that's the blessing right there then. And um, finally, I sp I've spoke to Mick on numerous occasions doing interviews with him. I spoke to him last week as well and I said to him, you told me that you're going to be fighting for a world champion, for a world title next year at some point or within the space of a year. Now, obviously, with what's going on, shows being cancelled, fight dates not doing. Has this pushed Mick's hopes of becoming a world champion further back into the late 2021 now? Or do you still feel that he can still become a world champion sort of like within a calendar year? I think, I think boxing's had a, the world has had a pause on boxing um, from, from the start of 2020. Uh, well, from March 2020, the, the boxing world has had a pause. Everyone is going to remain where they were right there and then until it restarts again. With Mick's situation, you know, we're constantly having weekly press conference or press conferences, conference calls with, with the FIELA, with the government, with the hope that August will go ahead. You know, we're not overly sure what way that's going to go. We're hoping that, you know, the, the pandemic, the curve, comes off by then and we can we can just about get into to August. We also have a plan B and where we can push the date back to, worst case scenario, um, if we're going to continue it on 20, in 2020. But with with that in mind, you know, Michael's number one with the WBO. He will be number one with the WBO when this restarts. Shakur probably will move up by then. There's an opportunity with Mick and, and Mariaga, Mick and Dogbo. Um, you know, a few others, Christopher Diaz, there's a few other names that's out there that, that he could be straight in against. But I would still like them to have another step in fight before that. I know he's he's chumming at the bit, the one right now. I know Adam Booth 
really believes that he can he can win a world title right now. He he called me. We I went over and watched some of the sparring in, in training camp, and it was very good. But the, he called me at the end of training camp when they came back from Marbella, and was very adamant that it, after this fight he's ready for a world title. Um, good. So so it was big. You, he doesn't really make much claims and much statements. He would be the same as me. You know, let's take our time. Let's build the stages. Let's kill, keep the building blocks going. But for some reason, he has seen something in this camp that has really made him believe that, that Michael is ready to go for world title. Me, I, I like him to take every step. And, and one thing I realized on the path to, for the world title as a fighter is that these little steps all add up. Um, in terms of the memory bank, in terms of the schooling, the homework that you're doing all, in each camp, they all add up and there's no real need to rush because once you hit that level, every fight is hard. Yeah. So just build up, build up, build up, make sure you're ready before you do it. And if you do it at the right time, it will be perfect. Could it all fall at the right time in the, you know, this, this global crisis end at the right time perfectly for Mick? Possibly. Or could we have to wait six months? It's, it's also, it's also what could happen. So it's, um, same as everything, we're just, we're stalling, we're waiting, we're, we're, we're planning. Obviously planning for a world title fight next, if it, if it comes for it, but planning for it if it doesn't. So it's got, got different, uh, different caps on, different jug, juggling, different uh, balls here to see what we can get. Definitely. Well, Mick, uh, keep going, you're Mick, man. I've got Mick World Title fight in the heat. Because he told me as well he was going to fight in Glasgow on the Josh Taylor undercard. Is that right? That was a possibility. Yeah. Oh, um, can you imagine that possibility. Going that way? <laughs> We were going to move the March 17th fight to, to, to May, the, May 2nd uh, in the Hedro. So oh, it would have been. Man, that, that, that would have been a great show, that, too. Ah, it would have been brilliant. The Hedro was something else. Mm. It's, a, it's some, uh, some venue. I remember being there for, for the Come Off Games final where Mick and Paddy were fighting, yeah. and Joe Fitzpatrick as well. And it was unbelievable. I remember going there going, because it's some venue. It's just, it's just perfect. It's like a cauldron. The, the seats go like up rather than out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just looking down Class. at the great. Oh, well, well, we can just hope for the future and hopefully, obviously, this pandemic gets better. People start, you know, start getting their lives back on track and stuff like that because I think we're all in the same boat now when it comes to how we're feeling and, and whatnot. But primarily, we want everyone to be safe and well and stuff like that. And that's... Same with you, Jamie. I just hope your family's safe, you're safe, and I uh, look forward to the day when we can have another beer in Belfast before and after one of them shows at the Ulster Hall. So, thanks very much nice for your time, dear. I appreciate that, my man. Stay Thank safe. Yes.